Welcome everyone. Welcome to Getting Rain Gardens Built Without Lifting a Shovel. I'm Susan Bryan with Washtenaw County, Michigan Water Resources Commissioner's Office. And I'm here with my team. Elizabeth Heiser with Cuyahoga Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, Natalie Gertz Young with Lake Soil and Water Conservation District. And I'm Laura Bunnell with Chagrin River Watershed Partners. So today we are going to go through a program that I started about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, uh, called the Master Rain Gardener Program. And um, it's something that I started a long time ago, but I've now partnered with the folks in Cleveland to offer it there as well. So we're gonna talk to you about our um, experiences and our tips and tricks for how you might be able to do a similar program because we found it to be a very successful and effective way to get rain gardens built in your community. So first off, I'm going to sort of introduce the program, what it involved, uh, how I did it, and then Elizabeth Heiser is going to talk about more bringing the program to Northeast Ohio, how they brought a regional collaboration together, and how they pulled it together, pulled it together to pool funding and share the work. And it made it a lot easier and a lot more effective in Northeast Ohio. Natalie Gertz Young will be speaking on the Master Rain Gardener community there in Northeast Ohio and what made it effective both during normal times and then after COVID, how they were able to pivot. Laura Bunnell will be talking about expanding this uh, module, teaching module, to also expand towards professional landscapers and contractors, um, how to install rain gardens and how to market to their client base. And then also talk about some of the results in Northeast Ohio to um, expanding this program. So then we'll conclude and talk to you a little bit about how to learn more. Elizabeth, would you move it along, please? Thanks so much. Okay, so many of you might be from cities and towns that are basically built out. If you're trying to get rain gardens built, it can be difficult because there's no more just empty land sitting around to build rain gardens on. And that's the way my town of Ann Arbor is. You can see there's lots of houses, there's parks, there's the big house. And if I were to build a big rain garden, if I were to fill up the big house with water, um, I know that maybe you all in Ohio would find that funny, but actually there'd be a bunch of people in Michigan who would be kind of mad. So um, there's not a lot of space. So where are we gonna put all this new green infrastructure? Um, Partnering with some of these people in that little houses uh, is a great way to do that because uh, each one of those people, if they built a rain garden in their house, we'd take a big chunk out of our stormwater problem. So getting rain gardens built by residences is uh, a great way to do it because not only do they put their blood, sweat and tears into it, but they also design it themselves and then they maintain it afterwards. And maintaining rain gardens that are in the public realm can be a big drain on a municipality's uh, resources over time. So getting the community to build their own rain gardens is an effective way to do that. So, so far in Washtenaw County, we have more than 1,200 rain gardens built over the past 12 years uh, because of this program. And getting uh, working with the community, partnering with, uh, with residents is a wonderful way to do that. So how I started at the beginning when I used to design and uh, talk to rain residents about building uh, rain gardens and design them myself. But at, now I focus on teaching people to design and build their own rain garden. And that's turned out to be a much better model because instead of giving people fish, you're teaching them to fish as the old saying goes. So back in um, 2006, when all this started, um, we were using staff to design rain gardens and helping people out with their designs. And over time, it's turned out that we can do about 13 a year. Like that's our staff capacity. And sometimes we have uh, better years. Like there was that one really good intern who rocked it in 2019. But in general, that's about what we can do. But teaching a master rain gardener class, you can teach a lot more people and get a lot more rain gardens built. The master rain gardener class is not just a one night class. It's uh, really teaching the community how to design a rain garden, how to get it on paper, how to select plants, 
how to dig that rain garden. So all the logistical challenges of getting compost to your site and spreading mulch and what tools to have and um, how to uh, recruit someone to help you out doing all that digging. And then how to mulch and how to plant, how to keep those plants alive over time. If you don't, if you've never built a rain garden yourself at your very own home, let me just tell you that it is a big job. So teaching people, uh, convincing people to build a rain garden out of their own free time on their own land is kind of a big ask. So let me just run you through like maybe all the steps that there are to building a rain garden. This is after it's designed. This is just the building part. There, this is before the yard, before this is on one of the master rain gardeners who built a rain garden here in Ann Arbor. There's before, and then he started like recruiting pe people to help dig, which is an essential part of building a rain garden. Here's his daughter starting to take out some, um, some concrete. Then he started to ask other people like his teenage sons to help out as well because we're, that down, the water in that downspout needs to get to the rain garden in the front. So here's, a, here's part of the process. Uh, digging a trench from the water source to the rain garden has to be done. It's a lot of work. And then this rain garden actually is a little more work because it has a retaining uh, wall at the edge of it. Not all rain gardens have that, so this is a little fancier perhaps, but still more digging. Finally, the rain garden is sculpted into the land, so the water is going to pool at the right depth. There it is, looking all sculpted. And then there's spreading mulch and planting the baby little plants. And then nature finally takes over and the plants start looking beautiful and growing. So that's kind of the arc of building the rain garden. But if you can imagine doing that in your own yard, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. It's more than one, more than one weekend worth of work. So when you're asking other people to do it, they need a little more guidance than say, do something easier like recycling or something like that. Another benefit for having people do it themselves is they, each year their rain garden gets better. Denise held her garden here. She improves it every single year so that it looks more and more beautiful. And um, this is one of the benefits because often municipal rain gardens are not cared for with this amount of detail and this amount of um, attention to detail. So uh, having rain gardens out in the landscape that say, this is a rain garden and this is what it looks like is wonderful, wonderful marketing. So by teaching people how to fish, teaching people how to design and build their own rain garden, we've been able to expand our capacity to build rain gardens out in the community. So if you'll remember, we were able to build about 13 a year just with our own staff design capabilities. But by teaching people how to design the rain gardens themselves this past year, even during COVID, 97 rain gardens were built by residents out in the community. So now we're up to 1200 rain gardens. So it's getting to be quite a few. We were able to, um, a few years ago, tape our master rain gardener class online back before it was cool, <laughs> before all, the, all of this. And um, it's, on, it's on YouTube. So if in your community you wanna just take that module and display it and use it as a training class in your community, you totally can. Um, but uh, a good way to do it, there's actually more to it than just the class. Like if there's a whole scaffolding of support and um, community building that happens along with the class that really helps people get over that hump, overcome their barriers to like actually build the garden because that's what I want. That's the thing that I'm counting is did they build the rain garden? It's great if they're out there telling the neighbors about it, which is wonderful. And we want them to become ambassadors out in the community, but we want them to build a rain garden. So um, that we turned it into an online class and through that online class and also the in-person class, there's some of the things that the tips and tricks that I learned that I passed along to my partners in Cleveland so that they could start out um, from a place of knowledge and not having to repeat mistakes that I had made years and years ago. So some of the um, tips and tricks that I learned were, um, number one is people really need individual feedback on their individual designs. So they're designing a rain garden for their particular piece of property and they need to know that that's actually gonna work. They need a teacher or an alumni or some, someone to look at their plan 
and fact check it and say, okay, this is going to work because they're about to spend a few weekends, a lot of work, a little bit of money, and um, quite a bit of capital in their family that this is actually going to work. It's not going to cause problems for my neighbor. I'm going to solve my own drainage problems. They need confidence. That said, that individual feedback takes a lot of staff time. So it ends up being the bottleneck in offering this class. So what one thing that I've done is to utilize alumni as peer educators. So I'll have alumni come back and give advice to the class and um, on a one-to-one -one basis. So the person will show them their photos of their yard and their plan and the alumni will tell them like, give them advice, like this is how you might logistically wanna implement this or your plan looks great. I think this is gonna work wonderfully. And it really helps the person receiving the advice. It also keeps the person, gets the person giving the advice keeps them engaged and um, trains them as a knowledgeable ambassador out in their community. So that's wonderful, but it also increases your organizational capacity. Uh, second tip and trick is, and another, because people really need to, um, people really need a knowledgeable person to give them advice. So here's this happening in person before COVID. Uh, another tip is to offer a field trip. And this only works when you're doing an in-person class uh, but it can be uh, if when an online class, if you can have people just stop by a rain garden that exists. People really need to see the three dimensional sculptural quality of a rain garden because you're really sculpting into the, into the land, this garden, and they don't quite get it until they see it in person. So there's another tip that's part of this training. Um, and then also it's not necessary. It's um, it's not a manufacturing process. You really have to keep in touch with people as people and celebrate their success. And um, I give T-shirts so that they can you know wear it with pride and also a sign that they can put in their garden, so that their neighbor asks them about the rain garden and they can tell them all about it. It gives them an opportunity to be an ambassador. Um, but they really want um, to hear from you about how great their work is and also um, that they're. Uh, that they're anointed, that they're enabled to go out there and tell people about it. So those are some of the uh, lessons that we've learned um, for how to make uh, people actually build their rain gardens. Another great thing about working with the community is that you end up with a bunch of people who are interested in stewardship. They're interested in volunteering in your public rain gardens, and it's a wonderful sort of side benefit of having a master rain gardener class. So they, and a lot of them are already gardeners, so they know a lot of these skills already on your left and you don't even have to train them. So it's wonderful to have this skilled workforce ready for you. All right, so Elizabeth is gonna talk a bit on the regional collaboration that is going on in Northeast Ohio. Thanks so much, Susan. So our Northeast Ohio Master Rain Gardener program really does owe all its success to our wonderful project partners, but especially Susan and the wonderful program she's created out of Washtenaw County uh, for you, allowing us to use their template and their resources and providing us guidance throughout the implementation. Our Northeast Ohio Master Rain Gardener program began in late 2018 when we contracted with Susan, our partners at the Metro Parks and Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District provided the funding to bring Susan here and train all of us to become trainers with a train the trainer workshop. We had um, partners from all over Northeast Ohio that came together and we learned this wisdom together so that we can make our program really great. After we received our Train the Trainer program and went through and most of us became Master Rain Gardeners ourselves, we held two in-person programs in 2019, the first of which Susan came and gave us that confidence to be good trainers, just like we give confidence to our Master Rain Gardeners to really do the job. The Watershed Stewardship Center in Parma is where we held our first class. It's the perfect location for teaching people about stormwater and rain gardens because you have on-site training tools and stormwater control measures and all those plants that we talk about in class for the rain gardens. 
Now we've built up where we have two during normal times in-person courses, one led by Chagrin River Watershed Partners and one led by Cuyahoga Soil and Water Conservation District each year. And we also offer three online programs, both Chagrin River and Cuyahoga Soil and Water offer one, and also our partners at Summit Soil and Water Conservation District order one, uh, offer another online program. But none of those programs would be successful without our plant guru, uh, Natalie Gertz Young from Lake Soil and Water Conservation district and that's one of the things we really took home from the train the trainer is that you really do need a plant expert on your team of trainers when you host these master rain gardener workshops and Natalie has been providing that for all of our online and in-person content content you also need those knowledgeable hosts that Susan talked about we're very fortunate that we have partners with Cleveland Metro Parks Lake Metro Parks and hold an arboretum where we can hold these wonderful in-person classes. Using this collaborative approach to a region-wide master rain garden program really was not, um, not unusual for us. We already have some really great existing partnerships regionally. And one of those is the Northeast Ohio Public Involvement and Public Education Work Group, other, otherwise known as NeoPipe. We really work to bring unified messages across Northeast Ohio when it comes to stormwater education and involvement. We want to all be talking the same language, using the same themes. We hold theme related events every year. We pool resources to make sure that everyone is getting equal access to our booklets, banners, BMV ads. When we write grants, we try to write regional grants to get money to implement these education programs throughout the region and really enhance the, the good work that each district is doing. The Northeast Ohio Public Involvement Public Education Work Group is a regional, regional consortium of soil and water conservation districts, conservation organizations, and other government agencies committed to improving water quality in Northeast Ohio. And since 2002, we've been effectively developing and providing those regional resources to increase public awareness of stormwater issues and opportunities to protect our shared waters, which fits so nicely with the Master Rain Gardener program. You know, really stepping, going beyond those Rain Garden 101 workshops that we were offering before and providing this really intensive training that provides residents with the tools they need to actually put a rain garden in the ground. And by doing this as a group regionally, we got staff trained across the region, not just Cuyahoga Soil and Water staff, but we have educators from all over the Neopipe group that are also trained to offer this program, adding capacity so that we can really get lots of rain gardens in the ground throughout the region. Our other regional collaborative that has really helped us to get this program up and running so quickly is with the Central Lake Erie Basin Collaborative, otherwise known as CLEB. We have a network of watershed groups that are working together, 26 watershed groups across 16 Northeast Ohio counties, all developing resources and building capacity to achieve those regional water quality goals. We've already set up a really good foundation of getting region-wide grants and partnerships with foundations that help us in our work. And this really helped us to secure funding for the Master Rain Gardener program through the end of 2022. Without the model of working together to secure funding for our program, bringing our resources together, we really wouldn't be at the reach and scope that we've already achieved that Laura's gonna talk about later. But through those partnerships with our communities, our stormwater departments, our grantors, and our local foundations. We've really hit the ground running with Master Rain Gardener, um, and we're just gonna keep going from there. Susan's Train the Trainer model really set the stage for us to take the Master Rain Gardener program and run with it, but it was our collaboration with our local partners that allowed us to expand and fund the program so quickly. We're really excited to continue these great partnerships well into the future, and we're already in talks with Central and Southwest Ohio as they look to adopt the program. While our program in Northeast Ohio, we were very lucky. We're in the same eco region as Ann Arbor. Um, one of the things we share, <laughs> and so that meant we could recommend all the same plants. Um, but we did notice some trends that required us to make some adaptations for Ohio that needed to be tweaked for our rain gardeners to be successful. We had a lot of students, gardeners that were interested that came from the suburbs and the exurbs and that meant they have bigger houses, they have bigger lots. And a lot of them have drainage issues. So 
they already have a place where ponding is occurring and they really needed to solve a problem. And if we use the math from our original um, Ohio Rain Garden Manual, or we just use the math from Master Rain Gardener that's based on treating your typical roof or driveway runoff, that would result in these crazy large gar rain gardens because the lawn was being treated like, like it was pavement. So we adapted the math, we broke out our local curve numbers and our calculators, talked with our, our partners at Ohio EPA, and we figured out some equations that'll work better for those that are looking to treat, treat permeable or pervious surface treatment, meaning much less intimidating garden sizes that will still solve major drainage issues. So stay tuned for official updates to the Ohio Rain Garden Manual with these simplified calculations that we really believe will mean more rain gardens in the ground and more people interested and not so overwhelmed by the concept of rain gardens. Next up, I'm going to hand things over to Natalie and she's going to talk to you guys about building a master rain gardener. All right, everyone. So as Susan already mentioned, uh, it is really a really, really key feature of this program is building your the, this base of people, this community that can kind of help take some of the load off of you and uh, kind of spread it out. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what building that community has been like for us for the past couple of years. Um, and also, also like some things that are different and uh, how different people sometimes may participate in different ways. So uh, building our community of rain gardeners here. Let's see. All right, so we do have two different types of classes that we offer. Well, really more, but kind of two different groupings of classes. So uh, first off, as Elizabeth mentioned, we offer Every year we try to offer two in-person classes and three online classes. Um, our in-person classes are uh, about, there's five of them. They're four hours long, sometimes longer if we go on a field trip that's further away. Um, it's four classes of content where they learn something. And then the last class, they share their plans and we, their classmates as well as the instructors give them feedback. Um, as part of this class, a lot of times before class, sometimes you also are giving all these people feedback on, class, on, their, on their garden plans, which is really important. We want them to, they need to get that feedback. That's what gives them the confidence to actually end up installing it. Um, but it, it's a lot of work and it's a big time commitment, not only for us as instructors, but it's a really big time commitment for people participating in the class. So the folks that tend to do the in-person classes um, which this is actually a really, really great strategy for um, building your program is our first in-person class was a lot of folks who were retired, um, a lot of folks who were already master gardeners. Um, so those folks that already kind of have that time and kind of have a little bit of a base knowledge in it are really great people to get on your team early on. Um, so that's kind of what our in-person classes tend to be like. Um, we offer them on weekdays. To, that, to kind of cater to that specific crowd. Um, if we did a four hour classes on weekends, we might get a little bit of a different crowd, maybe a bus busier folks that maybe uh, couldn't do it on a weekday. Um, but then we also offer online classes and uh, online classes, we've done several different kind of uh, iterations of, of online classes. We're trying everything, you know, it's that you throw the spaghetti at the wall and when it sticks it's ready um so we're kind of going by that we're trying a little bit of everything and seeing what works best so we've offered live classes uh then we've also done we've recorded those classes and offered those as a live simulated class we also have broken up all the content and all the presentations that we give during the in-person class and we've broken those into different modules and recorded those so those modules range anywhere from five to 20 minutes. Um, and if you are taking this class virtually and you do the, the module form of it, uh, you would watch a few of those a week. Um, and then there's homework and assignments in addition to that. Um, those modules are also really nice when you do the um, live or the live simulated class, because then they can, can kind of go back and be like, oh, well, I forgot what they said about soils or how to dig this thing. So you can actually go back and kind of look at that information on your own time. And it's a little less clunky and, and well-organized information. 
Um, and then we also have um, that live simulated or the module. And then you can also add a weekly, just like a Zoom question and answer. So you'd still have some of that one-on-one -on -one time, but it isn't quite as much of a commitment for you or your participants. So during COVID, um, we had already done, we had already um, had a few classes on the schedule. So we had two, for 2020, we had two in-person classes in the schedule. Um, we had already done one of our online courses and then we had two more planned. Um, well, when March hit, we realized that uh, we're probably having all virtual classes this year. And we were super, super lucky that we had all of these tools already ready for us. Um, we were just kind of trying to tweak and find the method that kind of suited our participants best that we could also handle as well. Oh, can we go back with Elizabeth? Thank you. Okay, so we do have different, these are our different formats. And um, you can add this weekly Zoom that we talked about onto both our live simulated as well as the module portions. Um, and I will say that all of these different, different kind of ways that you can take this class um, online, they did have different amounts of success with people actually completing their homework and turning it in, completing the course um, and getting rain gardens in the ground. So um, there's definitely different levels of participation and it does seem to correlate with um, you know the amount of effort that they have to put into taking the class. So uh, the live ones, we actually didn't do any entirely live classes in 2020. We did do one in 2019. Um, and we had pretty good feedback with that one. We had pretty good participation. Um, our live simulated um, when coupled with the modules, um, they, when those are just by themselves, you get some uh, feedback. Um, you might get like, you can, but it's really hard to gauge kind of where people are. So, and how participate, how, how they actually are participating. Um, unless they're like very furiously sending you emails and asking you lots of questions. Cause sometimes in the live simulated, they don't realize it's not actually live. And so they're trying to ask questions and nobody's answering, nobody's home. Uh, so unless that's happening, it's really hard for us to tell kind of how much they're participating. Um, and so that is why we added that weekly Zoom question and answer. And this does kind of, kind of seem to build that community so that we're getting to know each other. We're getting to know our participants. They're getting to know us more than just a recording of us, which is what they're getting to know otherwise. Um, so that is a really, um, it, it is, it's a good way to try and build a little bit more of a community during a time period where we haven't really been able to otherwise. Um, so that has been very useful. Um, I will also say that these can also be done self-paced. So sometimes you will have a participant that, um, somebody that really, really wants to take this class, but our time schedule doesn't fit with their time schedule. They need to do it over 12 weeks instead of over five or six weeks. Um, so they can do it self-paced, um, but those who do it self-paced, that is kind of like the lowest level of commitment. And therefore we seem to get the fewest number of rain gardens out of people who choose to take the course that way. So, with these different formats, we have different levels of participation, not only in them actually like completing the course and, and making it through everything and designing a rain garden and installing a rain garden, but also with the level that they participate in this community of rain gardens after they graduate and install their rain garden. So folks who do it in person, there's a lot more participation. And then kind of as the amount of the commitment that level that they have to take to order to complete the class, that kind of goes down, um, their participation goes down with that as well. So our in-person highest levels of participation, live, I would say our live and the um, live simulated and module with Zoom are all pretty, pretty probably close. Um, and then when you get down to where they just don't really personally interact with the instructors much, um, there is kind of less participation in the the Ring Gardener community in general. And it takes all different kinds of people to build a community. So just because somebody can't take an in-person 
class doesn't mean that they're not going to participate in the community um, because they absolutely do. So folks who take the class in person, they might be more likely to offer um, a tour of their rain garden once it's installed. They might be more likely to help out during an in-person class. Um, maybe they're the person who wants to table at an event to try and promote the program. Um, so in-person people like to do things in, pre in person. They like to talk to people, interact with people face to face. Um, folks who prefer to take the class online, they maybe wouldn't like all of that in-person one-on-one time. And that maybe isn't how they wanna participate in this Master Rain Gardener community. But those online folks are great for, uh, for example, participating in our Facebook page. So the Northeast Ohio Master Rain Gardeners, we have our own private Facebook group, which is where folks post their homework and their plans and be like, oh, my, you know, my blue flag iris isn't doing very well in my rain garden. Has anybody else had this problem? So um, those folks are a lot more active in that group and they take a huge amount of weight off of the instructors. They take a big amount of weight off of us because they're giving their feedback, they're sharing their experiences because some of our, some of these folks have installed more than one rain garden or maybe they've helped their neighbor install a rain garden. So they're some of our best advocates. And so we need people who wanna to talk to people in person and wanna to talk to people online. And this with all of these many hands has made for significantly lighter work. Um, we're gonna get a little bit deeper into the numbers. Uh, Laura's gonna get into that next, but all of us working together has made more rain gardens be installed in Northeast Ohio in the past two years than we probably have had installed in the last 15 without this program. So it definitely works and it is less work as this program goes on because of all of these volunteers and how this community is built. Um, so, but there is another addition to this community that, uh, that Laura is going to talk about next. Thank you, Natalie. Um, yes, so as Natalie mentioned, um, it does take a lot of different people to join. We have a lot of different members making up this community. And we are also trying to bring a different group to this um, class, and that will be professional landscapers. So let me see if I can advance these. Elizabeth, would you mind advancing? So what we did in Northeast Ohio, um, we brought the professional track to the no Northeast Ohio Master Rain Gardener program. So now we have two tracks. Um, so the professional Master Rain Gardener track is geared towards landscape professionals and contractors who are looking to install rain gardens on residential properties um, as part of their client base and uh, professionally. Um, so what this program does, it trains these professionals on how to install rain gardens, and it also provides them with the tools um, that they need to market these new skills and also just um, share the concept of rain gardens in general to their existing client base as well. Um, by developing this educated uh, professional workforce um, to assist property owners with stormwater management issues, um, we're going to reach a wider network and um, additional homeowners who aren't taking the course themselves, thereby getting even more rain gardens in the ground. So after taking this course, landscape professionals um, also come away with additional knowledge um, on other environmentally beneficial landscaping practices, such as the benefit of native plants, um, alternatives to chemicals, applications, um, different things like that. So really this training can provide multiple benefits. Uh, we really um, hope with this uh, professional uh, track, we um, have the uh, concept of rain gardens become more familiar to the general public and um, establish green infrastructure practices and approaches as the default landscaping method in Northeast Ohio. And we really hope that this track will partly um, help with that. Um, also, once uh, the professional rain gardeners receive their certification, they are added to a list of professional rain gardeners that um, we post on all of our websites and that we also share with homeowners um, as a part of Sugar and River Watershed Partners and the other soil and water conservation districts. We get a lot of requests from homeowners who have um, flooding issues and other stormwater management issues on their property. And a lot of the times we're suggesting rain gardens as a solution to help mitigate those problems. But a lot of times those homeowners really don't want to do it themselves. Um, so this list has been really useful in sharing with others. Um, we know these people have went through a tried and true method for rain garden installation. And so we're confident to say that these 
these professionals have taken the program and they can install a rain garden in your yard. So while we're having more resources and tools for these homeowners, we're also helping um, these landscape professionals market their new skills and services. Um, as part of the professional track, um, in addition to all the course content that Natalie had mentioned, um, you know, taking the classes and everything like that, they also have to pass a final exam and they either have to install a rain garden of their own in their yard or a friend's yard um, or participate in a field day. Um, a field day is basically the installation of a public rain garden from start to finish. Um, and what you can see here, uh, these are professionals installing a public rain garden at Lakefront Lodge, which turned out very nicely. Um, before, we uh, really wanted to make the professionals work for their certification. So we uh, wanted them to both install a rain garden of their own and also participate in a field day. Um, but as we developed the program and time moved on and talking with others in the landscaping industry, we found that this could be a huge barrier uh, to completion. So um, knowing that, we decided to make it an either or option for these professionals because we really do want them um, to get their certification. So we removed that barrier and uh, made that adjustment. Um, and that's not on the only improvement we made. Um, as we're developing this program, we really want the, tra the professional track to be um, more robust and more customized for the, this, this audience. Um, so what we're doing, we're going to continue to improve it. Um, we are thinking about adding more content. Um, one will be how to solve a, a problem in a homeowner's yard. As you can see in this picture, this has major flooding issues um, and ponding issues. So if you're a landscaper and you came here, you may not know rain gardens would be a solution to this problem and you may do some sort of gray infrastructure installation. Um, but with this course, this would teach them how to solve these different types of problems. So whether it's ponding, basement flooding, receiving stormwater runoff from your neighbor's yard, things like that. So we're gonna have a module on that. Um, and we're also gonna have a module on bioretention maintenance. We find this um, is something that uh, landscapers really do need. Um, we, you know, a lot of the times um, the seasonal maintenance that's done on our public bioretention um, areas is not adequate. Sometimes they just hack everything down. Um, so we think that this um, module that we're going to add um, will be really practical information um, as well. So we're hoping to have these modules up and ready um, either late this year or early in 2022. Um, also, um, after speaking with other professional landscapers, we're finding that, you know, as Natalie mentioned, this five week course is a significant time commitment. Um, and some people, you know, can do that. But when you're, you know, during your busy season as a professional landscaper, that's a lot to do. So we're learning that that might be a barrier for their participation and completion as well. So what we're thinking of doing is um, having a shorter and more intensive um, classes, like perhaps a two day long session, um, as opposed to a drawn out five week course. So we're investigating that and see what's going to work for the professionals, but we're thinking we're going to move some uh, more towards that format for the professionals. So lots of changes. Um, and um, we think, you know, by removing these barriers um, and uh, making it easier for them to complete, um, we are going to increase the amount of rain gardens in the ground. As I mentioned, they'll be able to market these services to their clientele base and uh, increase the overall outcomes of the Northeast Ohio Master Rain Gardener Program. And speaking of outcomes, I'd like to share um, some of the results from um, our program since launch. So as you know, uh, the Northeast Ohio Master Rain Gardener Program was launched in spring of 2019 when we held our first in-person course. And since then, we have held a total of 10 courses um, that includes both in-person and online course courses. Um, and we've had 295 participants register for these courses so far. So really getting that base up. Um, and since um, inception, we have had 60 people receive and earn, I should say, their residential certification. And we've had 10 professionals earn their certification. I'm just going to see these numbers go up as time goes on. Um, also, as part of the program, um, as mentioned earlier, we have an Adopt a Rain Garden program, and this helps to build community, um, helps keep our public rain gardens that really can use a lot of love, looking nice and fresh and maintaining their function. Um, and I, as mentioned, I'm not sure if this was mentioned, actually, um, if you can't install your own rain garden um, as a part of the program, because that's really what you need to do to uh, receive your certification, you can um, adopt a rain garden and put some volunteer time towards that. 
Um, Cause some people just can't install them. They either rent, they might live in a condo association. There's all these reasons why you just might physically not be able to do it. So this is another great way to receive your certification and also really help, you know, your community. Um, so since our inception, we have engaged 13 rain garden volunteers, all wonderful people working super hard who have already put in 266 volunteer hours maintaining our local public rain gardens that otherwise would not have that level of attention. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, and I bet you're wondering how many rain gardens we've gotten installed since 2019 as a result of this program. And that answer is 76 residential rain gardens, which is super exciting. Um, and these 76 rain gardens are uh, capturing over 930,000 gallons of stormwater each year. So that's really exciting. Um, and you can see how our numbers have um, increased a ton from 2019. I think we had about 20 some rain gardens go in and then in 2020 is over 50. Um, so that's really exciting. We're just hoping to see that graph increase and hoping to see that map um, fill up with blue dots all over Northeast Ohio. So we're really excited about our results and hope they continue to increase as we um, continue the program and improve it. Um, and the other nice thing about the course is not only are we getting all these rain gardens in the ground, but people really love it. We're finding we get such great feedback from people, whether it's the online course or whether it's the in-person course, people really love it. Um, for instance, this is a quote from Al Barnes, and he said that the course has exceeded his expectations, and he thought that our team did a great job of preparing everyone for their individual rain garden projects. So that was wonderful to hear. Um, another woman just who took the uh, online class just this past winter said this is the best garden class she has ever taken. Um, and it, uh, I think what jumped out at me with this quote, quote was that when the course was done, she actually felt that she had the knowledge to build a rain garden. In the past, um, when she had read or gone to talks about rain gardens, uh, she really felt overwhelmed by the whole idea, but now she understands the steps. So this is um, really, uh, I like to highlight this quote because that's really what we wanted to do. Um, all of us as organizations have given, you know, hour long rain garden workshops and presentations and maybe put the spark in people, but always left people feeling a little overwhelmed as she mentioned and not, I don't think we've gotten a ton of rain gardens built by those short little workshops. So this course really goes into detail and builds people's confidence and really enables them to actually install their rain garden on their own. So it was really nice to hear that. Um, and then finally, another quote I wanted to share, um, this person wants to share this information and create more rain, uh, more awareness about rain gardens with her garden club members. And as Susan mentioned, um, that's a big component of this project uh, program as well, um, you know, building awareness and creating these rain garden advocates that after we teach them, they can go share this information um, by giving talks at their libraries or, or you know, just show, telling, talking about it with their neighbor. You know, we put that sign out there so their neighbor can ask them questions. So it's great to hear that these people really want to share this information with others and continue to expand on rain gardens in our area. And um, very excited about these results. Um, I think we're doing well and we're just so thankful for Susan and everything she shared with us. And we couldn't have done it without her. And we are so happy to have brought this program to Northeast Ohio. Um, so now I'll pass it along to Susan who will give a conclusion. It's been my pleasure working with you all. You, you guys are great partners. Um, all right, um, so in, we're, I'm gonna give just a few concluding remarks, but also if you wanna learn more about reaching out um, to people and basically you're doing applied behavior change, science is really what you're doing when you're doing this kind of um, program. Uh, Elizabeth, if you could go to the next slide. The, um, when, when I talk about behavior change science, you might, be talk, you might have heard about nudge marketing, getting people to do something, or um, basically you're not just informing people, you want them to do something, you want them to act. So this, there's a whole science behind this, um, which I'm gonna share you just a few little tips and tricks, and then also some organizations that if you go to their conferences, you can really learn a lot. And it's an amazing treasure trove of how to structure an outreach like this where you want people to do something. Okay, so with, with getting people to build rain gardens, we're still in the innovators. I'm sure you've heard the term early adopters. Actually, Everett Rogers is the one who um, made up that phrase, early adopters. We're barely in early adopters, I would say. We're not in the early majority yet. Um, and we certainly haven't even begun to, to address the laggards, the people who 
may never actually even do it. We'll just have to wait for the next generation to come along. Um, but we're still in the very, very beginning. And how to like the strategies that you that you employ for those early people are actually different from the, what you would employ for the majority of the people. But those early people are essential. Um, they're the ones who establish that this is a societal norm. It's something normal. It's something that anyone can do. They make it seem a little bit less intimidating. Um, and it's so much easier to visualize yourself doing something if you see your neighbor doing it first. So when you think about things that way, you can start thinking things in a way that's more like behavior change science. Um, okay, so this, um, this science is called, strangely, um, social marketing, which sounds like social media, but that's not what it is. It's behavior change uh, science applied in the real world. And it's not just applied um, to make people do anything, it's for the social good. So if you look up if you're Googling it, you would um, maybe call it community-based social marketing is what you'd want to Google. Um, and some of these suite of tools really informed my thinking as I was building my program. Um, for one is that start with those people that are ready for change. And in this situation, it's gardeners, people who already have fun in the soil. They already have a lot of the tools. They just need a few, uh, you know, a little bit of education and they're going to build that rain garden. The second one, and Natalie touched on this, is removing the barriers. What is stopping people from doing this behavior? Is it the amount of work? Is it the societal pressure to just have lawns? Is it, you know, find out what those barriers are and then work to remove them. So in this way, it's not just marketing, it's structuring your program in a way that you've addressed whatever concerns people have about this new behavior. Um, and uh, actually, you know, one of the important things too is building community. So having um, people in the neighborhood do this new behavior is a really important part. So when Natalie's talking about the Facebook group and people helping each other, this is one of the essential parts of behavior change. And the last one is avoiding negative or fear-based messaging. And you, um, this is probably coming to um, coming home these days because of all the uh, things in the news, uh, but. When messaging is based in a negative, it often actually stops people from acting. Uh, positive messaging enables them to actually act. So pride in the look of their garden, um, pride at their um, being able to implement a rain garden. These sorts of positive feelings is what helps people um, change their behavior. So if you want more information about this sort of way of thinking and structuring your outreach, there's um, a bunch of social marketing organizations that you can join, and some of them have amazing conferences and papers and trainings and things like that that you can access. So the International Social Marketing Association has a really good class that will train you on social marketing principles. The Pacific Northwest Social Marketing Association actually has a conference in December that last year was virtual, so anyone could um, attend it, which makes it super affordable. And then there's also the Social Marketing Association of North America. So those are places you can go to hear all sorts of case studies, not only in the environmental field, but this has really been pioneered by public health. So when you think about like smoking cessation programs or um, uh, all sorts of uh, behavior-based public health programs, that's where a lot of this research has really started and environment, our environmental programs are kind of playing catch up at this point. So. Uh, so the Master Rain Gardener program started out in Ann Arbor, also um, partnered with the Rouge Rip, Friends of the Rouge in Detroit. Ontario has, um, I've trained them to offer the Rain Garden Masterclass. It's in Kalamazoo, now it's in Cleveland, soon to come Col Columbus and Toledo. Because you know what, when Michigan and Ohio come together, it's gonna be good. <laughs> and it may be the first ever. <laughs> Um, because like, like uh, Elizabeth said, we're in the same eco region. It's all good. It's all good to hear people. Um, so in any case, we think it's a really successful program. We've had some good luck with it. Uh, so if you'd like to learn how to offer a Master Rain Gardener program in your area, it's a great way to collaborate. You can send me a note and I'll try to hook you up with people and maybe train you to do it too. Thank you so much to my collaborators, uh, Natalie Gertz-Young, Laura Bunnell, Elizabeth Heiser. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.